Hi everybody, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Amy from Neurotic Mom Bakes and I am so super excited about today's recipe. I'm going to be walking you through the whole process of making your own giant soft mall pretzels. Super excited about this recipe. I hope you'll try them. They're easier than you think. And so let's, let's get started. Okay, let's talk about yeast for just a second because I get a lot of questions about it. Um, there are basically three types. There's the instant yeast, the active dry yeast, and the rapid rise. The rapid rise I never use. Um, I have had people message me saying that it's worked before on like cinnamon rolls or um, dinner rolls. You only need one rise for that. I prefer instant because it's no fail. You don't have to activate it. However, if you do have the active dry, when you put the warm water in the bowl, put the yeast on top, mix it in, and let it sit for five to 10 minutes until it's all foamy and bubbly. Um, that's the only difference between using the active dry and the instant. The instant you can just go right away. So that's what I have. Okay, so let's start. We have one cup of warm water in here. If you are using the active dry, it needs to be about 110 degrees. If it's too hot, it'll kill the yeast. If it's too cold, it won't activate. Um, okay, one cup of warm water and two tablespoons of yeast. Again, I'm using the instant. I'm just gonna sprinkle that over the top. And to that, I'm going to add one cup of milk. I'm gonna get my butter melted. While that's melting, I am going to add two teaspoons of sugar. And two teaspoons of salt. Okay, and then two tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. All right, we're going to start with the whisk hook. And I'm going to, you're going to need a total of about four and a half to five and a half cups of flour. Um, but you're going to add it very gradually and I'll show you what it's supposed to look like when you know there is enough flour in there. But we're going to start with two cups just to get it all mixed in. Okay, start on low. Get that all mixed. Get the spatula. Once that's all mixed together, I'm going to scrape it down. Make sure I get all those little bits of flour. And then I'm going to switch to the bread hook. Another question I get asked a lot, this is possible to do without a, a KitchenAid mixer. Um, you can hand mix it with a hand mixer or you can actually do it by hand. It will just take more work um, stirring and kneading a little bit longer, but it is possible. Okay. With that on low, I'm going to add my flour very gradually. It'll look like it's not really mixing in, but just be patient. Eventually, all the flour will pull away from the sides. Okay, see it's pulling away from the sides. That's four cups right here. And I'm gonna give it a test to see if it's ready. Now, uh, you can see how it's holding on to the hook, and when I touch it, it's really sticky. Definitely not ready. Okay, so I'm gonna add another half a cup. So this makes four and a half. Okay, I'm gonna give it another test. What should happen is it should fall cleanly off the hook and when you touch it, it does not stick to your fingers. This is still much too sticky and it's sticking onto the hook. So I'm gonna keep going with the flour. You'll also know because the bowl will become clean. It'll pull all the flour away from the bowl. Okay, at this point, I've just got some flour pieces at the bottom of my bowl. So I'm gonna pull the dough off. It's getting there. It's not sticking quite as much. I'm actually going to 
just kind of turn this over and get the dry flower pieces on the top. I'm not gonna add any more right now. Just now that I've got the, the flower at the bottom, I'm just gonna see if that's gonna be enough. Ah, yes, you can see the bowl inside is really clean. And if it falls off the hook cleanly, it's, oh, it's just so close. I'm just gonna add maybe a couple tablespoons. It's still a little bit sticky, but you don't wanna overdo the flour. Okay, that's gonna be it. Yes. Yep, okay, see it's clean, falls off. You can pull it off and it's really clean. It doesn't stick to my fingers. We are good to go. All right, you can either uh, on low speed have your mixer do the kneading, or you can do it by hand. I'm gonna do it by hand for a minute. So you're going to spread some flour and just start kneading. Now if you've seen any of my other tutorials that involve yeast, bread making, cinnamon rolls, the dinner rolls, what else have I done? Anyway, um, you'll know I do the gluten test, the window pane gluten test. Same thing with this one. You want it, the kneading uh, develops the gluten, which makes the dough stretchy and gives it that really good texture. So you want to be able to stretch the dough and see the light through the dough without it breaking. We've got a little bit of gluten, but it breaks right away. So there's not enough gluten. So we just keep working it. Okay, I'm stretching. See how far it can stretch now, and it's not breaking? That's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. I know that's where it's supposed to be. You're just gonna form it into a ball. And like my other breads, this needs two rise, although with this one, the second rise is a lot shorter, um, only five or 10 minutes. But this first one is about 30 to 45 minutes. You're going to spray a bowl with cooking spray, drop this inside, cover with plastic. and let it do its thing. I'm gonna put mine in the windowsill. It goes faster in a warmer place. Find a sun patch in your kitchen and it will go faster. Yeah. Okay, we are ready for the next phase on our pretzels. Look at my dough, it has risen. I think I let it triple in size. I may have let it go a little too long, but it will still be fine. Um, so what you're gonna do, you're literally going to punch the dough down and pull it out of the bowl. Let me get some flour. Just a little bit of flour. Pull the dough out. You don't need to do anything with it. We're going to divide it into eight equal parts. And I'm just gonna use this up. Now if you want to get real technical and you want your pretzels to be exactly the same, totally optional but you can weigh each piece of dough. And get them exactly the same. Well, that one was 200 grams, this one was 165. So I'm just going to kind of I'm going for about 175. That's pretty. On each of these, or 160, though that's really small. 150, I think we're going for 150. Yeah, let's do that. So those are light. This is pretty heavy. I'm go like that. Good, okay. So if you want them to be exactly uniform, you can get your scale out 
and get your pieces. Now, believe it or not, it is much easier to roll these out with a slightly damp surface. I tried it on the flower and it was just sliding around. So I'm going to wipe the flower off. And this is the fun part. Kids can help with this part. Keep the rag handy because I'm going to keep wetting down my surface. But you're just going to roll each piece of dough and it's going to be quite long, longer than you think. So I just kind of work from the middle out. To move this out of the way because it's gonna, it really is going to be a really long piece. Okay, see how long that is? I would say that's, oh, two and a half feet. Um, 30 inches maybe. And it can be pretty thin because it's gonna puff up again quite a bit. So don't worry about rolling it too thin. Okay, there, I think we're ready. Now, let me show you how to fold these. It's really easy. All you do is you're going to, I'm gonna do it upside down so you can see it. I just want this to be thinner right there. I'm gonna loop it around like I'm making a circle, okay? Then I'm gonna keep pulling those down until it's a heart. Keep going and I'm going to cross those pieces, twist once, and then push them down into the bottom to form your pretzel shape. And then just have a, have a pan ready and place the pretzel on your pan. And then we just do, I'll kind of wet my surface down again, and we do all eight pieces. And as they're sitting there, they're actually going through their second rise. So by the time you're done with all eight, you are ready to start with this pan in the baking soda bath. It's really easy. Okay, so you can see the second rise happens pretty quickly. This tray is already puffed up to pretty much what it needs to be. So I'm going to bring this over to my stove. Let me show you what you need for this. Okay, so you want to have everything ready to go over here before you start boiling the pretzels. In here I have about three and a half cups of water and I'm going to boil that. And while that's boiling, I'm going to prep my other pans. Alright, so I'm going to have my cookie sheet completely ready. If you wanted to move these just to a floured surface and not use all these pans, you can. Um, just have them ready to go. Um, but have your baking sheet ready to go. Um, I don't use parchment for this. I, I just use some cooking spray um, because you're gonna lift the pretzel and put it directly on the pan. I'll show you how to do that. Get my... Just make sure you have a slotted spatula, something that can lift the whole thing out without bringing all the water with it. We are boiling and ready to go. Now you're going to add six tablespoons of baking soda. And stand back because it bubbles up. Okay, now you're going to take your pretzel, make sure that's dissolved in there. Take your pretzel and lay it away from you gently and you're going to just boil it for 30 to 40 seconds. That's all it needs and I just kind of spoon the water over just so it's continually soaking. And for whatever reason, this baking soda process, this baking soda bath, gives it that pretzel texture on the outside. So it's definitely a step you don't wanna skip. Okay, so just like 30 to 45 seconds, then you get your spatula and gently lift and place it on your pan. And you're just going to do that with all your pretzels. All right, pulling my last one out. These are going to go in the oven right away at 460 degrees 
for eight to 10 minutes and they're going to be quite brown on the outside. That's what you want, the crisp on the outside and they'll still be nice and soft on the inside. And while that's baking, get prepped, get an area prepped because you're going to need to put the butter and salt um, or butter and cinnamon sugar on right away while they're hot. So I will get a towel out and I'm going to melt some butter. So while that's um, in the oven, I have, I'm gonna pour some coarse salt. You want the sea salt. Um, you can use regular salt, but it doesn't, I mean, it'll taste great, but it doesn't, you don't see the actual pieces on. So I like the coarse sea salt. And then I'm going to do half of them with a cinnamon sugar mixture. So just have that ready to go. Um, have a spoon with the cinnamon sugar. You can just spoon it all over. And then I like a pastry brush with the melted butter. Okay, I just pulled these out of the oven. You can see they're quite dark on top, but that's what you want. And I'm going to immediately brush them with and generously. I like a lot of butter, salted butter. Just gives that extra. And then as soon as I'm done with just the one, immediately sprinkle it with the salt. And move on to the next one. Okay, there's our first tray. I'm gonna move that out of the way. So I have four with the butter and the salt, but for but for my last four, my littlest requested cinnamon sugar. So I'm going to do that. I'm gonna brush it with um, not quite so much butter, just enough to have the cinnamon sugar stick. It would also work if you wanted to pour the cinnamon sugar in a tray and just and put the whole thing in. I think this will work just fine. is right over there waiting to come and try, huh? <laughs> all right, there are our pretzels. And of all the recipes I have made, I think I like this one the best. I absolutely love the way these turned out. They taste just like malt pretzels. And who doesn't love a soft pretzel? Come on over, let's eat some. You wanna try this? He's been dying for the cinnamon sugar. So do you want me to rip off a piece? Yeah. That looks so good. I got a taste too. Tell me what you think. Oh my goodness, those are so good. I'm so glad you could join me today. I hope you'll give these a try. Let me know how they turn out for you. And if you wanna see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel.